You could get most of the sensational news from radio, too. Radio. It's a medium that seems as though it's been around forever. America's first radio station, KDKA in Pittsburgh, signed on the air in 1920, almost 100 years ago. And since then, radio has been the soundtrack of our lives. Every day, many of us count on our local stations to let us know what's happening outside our door. Wake up, wake up, wake up! Up you wake, up you wake, up you wake, up you wake! This is Mr. Senior Love Daddy, your voice of choice. The world's only 12-hour strong man on the air. And perhaps no one is as passionate about radio than the people working behind the mic. I've never done any drugs in my life, but if, if, uh, if you can classify this as a drug, uh, this is in my veins, it's in my DNA, it's in my bloodstream, it's the ultimate high for me. Nikki G is a local DJ for Philadelphia's oldie station 98.1 WOGL. On a Sunday afternoon, you can find him playing classic hits from back in the day. And if you manage to get through the lines, he may even take your requests. Hi, WOGL. Hey, Nikki, can I make a request there? Absolutely. What's going on? Radio's always been a companion, it's always been free, and, it's, and as long as we keep it entertaining and keep it local, um, I think radio will be around till the end of time. While Nikki G remains optimistic, there's no secret that the radio business faces many challenges. Radio giants iHeart and Cumulus have crippling debt, and CBS announced they plan on getting rid of radio completely. And today's consumers have other choices. Radio is competing with streaming services like Apple Music and Spotify. They allow listeners to pay a monthly fee to enjoy personalized content with no commercial interruption. According to the laws of physics, what goes up must come down. And what is popular for a while normally fizzles out and makes way for something else. But for those who love radio, they hope it will always be there. On the 10th floor in Old City at 4th and Market, you can find Sid Mark. He's made a career out of spinning nothing but Frank Sinatra records for the past 60 years. I got started in the way I was told to get started, as if you wanted to get on the air, the best thing to do would be sell your own time and then go to one of the smaller stations, tell them you've sold the time, and hope that they would put you on, and that's exactly what I did. Sid admits there are big differences from when he got started in the radio business. I mean, everything's all corporate now, it's CBS, NBC. Cumulus, you know, iHeart, Pandora, and they're not hiring individuals who have an idea for a program. Everything is formatted. Either you fit into it or you don't. Radio still remains near the top of the entertainment food chain. There are dozens of formats and listeners have more ways to tune in than ever before. Sid says there are reasons why radio maintains this unique edge over other platforms. You can't take a shower and watch television. You can't drive your car and watch television, not the driver anyhow. And uh, for the immediacy of things that are breaking, people in Philadelphia go to KYW. Sid agrees some form of radio will always exist. How successful it'll be, though, is anyone's guess. Will the big companies like iHeart and Cumulus survive, or will radio return back to its local roots? I guess that's just something we'll have to wait and see. For now, reporting in Old City, I'm Gerard Dabney.